Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Adventure Widely. This is part two of Packing for Ice Fest. I wanted to talk about some of the minimal equipment that I'd bring along when I want to do pictures and video in the backcountry. There's not a whole lot of gear that's required, but if you haven't done it before, it might be a mystery of just how simple it actually is to do. So let's jump right in. For Ice Fest in particular, there were uh, two additional things that I brought. First one is a tag line. Tag line is very useful because you may have to haul your gear up with you and you might not be able to climb with it. Uh, if you already have lines fixed and you can just ascend lines that are there, uh, it's much easier to do. You can bring the camera equipment up with you. But if you have to climb up and put lines up yourself while your professional climber or whoever you're taking pictures and video of is doing their own route, then you need to be able to manage that yourself and not get in their way. So having a tag line that you can hook on to your harness as a, on your haul loop uh, most harnesses have that on the very back of the harness. Uh, you can tag this or hook this line onto the tag loop and haul up your equipment with you after you get to a secure spot on the rope. The other thing you need to bring along is a pair of ascenders. Uh, these are very quick and easy to get up and down on a rope. Uh, much more so to go up on a rope, but you can use them to go down as well. There are lots of videos out there on YouTube that you can search for how to uh, climb a rope and ascend a rope using a pair of ascenders. That makes going up the rope and going back down very simple to be able to get in position and go hands-free while you are up on the side taking pictures or video of whoever you are uh, watching. So that's it that you have to take along really to be able to uh, hang out in your harness for a while and get pictures and video of somebody while they climb. Uh, that was the only thing I used when I was uh, on the Ice Fest trip recently. As far as equipment goes, uh, there are two things I will bring. For pictures and stills, I will usually bring either a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Um, the camera that I usually t take with me is the one actually filming me right now, so I can't show that in this video, but I can show how I rig it. So my preferred method is using this uh, triangular top load uh, camera case. The reason I like this is that besides the fact that I can zip it all the way around here and have the camera well secured inside of this bag, it also has a quick release snap buckle right here. So it makes getting the camera in and out of the bag very quick and simple. Uh, if I need to move a little bit, I can throw it back in here, clip this, and it's pretty secure. Uh, what I like about this is that being able to throw this over his shoulder and get it on the side of my body here, uh, this allows me to have easy access to get in and out of this pouch. It's designed to flip open, grab the camera. And then in conjunction with that, I use a single length uh, sling on a carabiner. So I will throw this also over my shoulder. Clip the carabiner in here. And then on the camera itself, there is a uh, Kevlar cord that is tied into a loop on one of the mount points for a normal uh, camera um, sling. I have that on the camera too. So this happens to be a good length when I adjust this that it sits inside of the camera bag. And then I am able to put the camera in here on the sling, close up the snap, and have the camera relatively secure. And the, the bag is secure, there's straps to me that are secure, and then the camera itself is also on a sling that is locked in here too. Uh, the only thing that I really have to worry about dropping while I'm up in the air is lenses. I will typically have a lens that is on the camera, and I will also have another lens in the bottom of this bag. Uh, this fits either my wide angle that I normally bring, which is a 17 to 35, or I will also bring a 100 millimeter macro. You want a wide angle to be able to capture a lot of the scenery. You don't want just very close up shots of somebody on a wall because if you don't have context for where they're at, it's hard to know if they're 20 feet off the ground or 200 feet off the ground. So having a wide angle and be able to capture that whole scene uh, really gives your uh, viewers of your pictures uh, a sense of depth and, and where they're actually at when they're climbing. The 100 millimeter macro, on the other hand, allows you to get some really nice out of focus bokeh shots. You can focus in on the details and get uh, nice uh, creative shots with that and have a little bit of a punch and zoom in um, for climbers that are a little bit further away from you. So those two lenses and this setup here is my preferred method to be out in the backcountry, um, getting pictures and video of whoever I happen to be watching. So moving on from the DSLR and the mirrorless side, uh, the other thing that I bring a lot is a GoPro. Uh, GoPros are small, they're lightweight, they're waterproof, and they are extremely durable. So I will bring one of those to capture video either mounted on myself or mounted on the climber. Uh, I currently have a Hero 6 Black, 
and this camera has performed very well. The stabilization in the body is very excellent as well. Uh, there are some videos out there saying you don't even need a gimbal anymore. For some situations, I disagree with that. I th still think that a gimbal mounted to a chest harness uh, on mountain bike, and anything that has a lot of dynamic movement, uh, still makes for better video. The GoPro 7, I have seen the footage from that. It does look very excellent, but I think to add that little extra bit of professionalism to your video, having a gimbal on there still uh, makes a little bit of a difference. However, that said, um, I do not use a gimbal when I have this tied to somebody's chest harness for skiing. I don't use it on uh, a helmet when someone's climbing. It's too much in the way and there's really no need for it because you don't have that much movement and shake that the gimbal is really stabilizing the image that much more than what the in-body stabilization in the GoPro does. So with that said, uh, accessories for the GoPro that I like to carry with me for this type of adventure. And remember, you have to carry all this stuff on your back as well as your climbing gear. So we try to make uh, use of a small amount of gear as possible and be, be able to bring what we need to do to capture the videos and capture the pictures that we're trying to produce. So first off, uh, the GoPro itself, I have a little rubber um, cap that I like to carry on this guy. Uh, these lenses, uh, lens covers are actually replaceable, but they do tend to get scratched up, especially if they're in your backpack full of all your other gear that you're gonna be using. So that's a very uh, minor investment, and I think it really pays off dividends not having to replace that front protector very often. The other thing you'll notice here on my GoPro is that it has a windscreen all the way around it. Uh, this was an excellent uh, purchase that I found. The GoPro by itself is very susceptible to wind noise. Uh, the microphones that they have in this thing, even with the the damping that is built into the GoPro, I think still suffers a lot. Having an extra windscreen on here or what they call a dead cat uh, makes all the difference. I have not had a need yet for a dead cat, even with the same mounted to somebody while they're skiing downhill. So this right here, excellent uh, investment. Uh, it's inexpensive, it's super lightweight. Uh, I definitely think that is something that should be in your kit if you are going to be shooting with a GoPro. Now, as far as mounts go, there are three mounts that I'll bring with me. Uh, the first mount, uh, this is a helmet mount for a vented helmet. So the way this works is that your helmets have vents on the sides of them. Uh, this goes into those vents, comes back out, and then loops back through this and pulls tight. So it does not work on a closed helmet. It only works on a vented helmet. Uh, if you want to use a closed helmet, you have to have one of the suction cups or one of the permanent sticker ones. Uh, I don't like those very much. You could also get by probably with the helmet band. It's like a elastic strap with a center strap. Um, so if you have a helmet that has the little ears for a uh, headlamp, you could probably use that as well, though I have not tried. But this guy is extremely lightweight, very small, uh, cost effective, and um, I find that for climbing especially, having a helmet mounted camera works really well because it's mostly out of the way. The only time you tend to bump that is if you're climbing under a roof or if you're looking down a lot and you end up smacking your head along the wall. Uh, I don't like chest mounted harnesses or shoulder mounted harnesses that you'll see some people use. Uh, for when they go backpacking. I don't like those for climbing because you are usually too pressed up against the wall and that tends to get in the way of what you're trying to do with climbing and you end up uh, smashing the camera against the wall quite a bit. So helmet is one option I like to use a lot. Uh, for other activities, whether it be backpacking, skiing, um, mountain biking sometimes, although I prefer to use a, a gimbal with the mountain biking, uh, I use a chest rig. Um, this chest rig goes on both sides go around here like this, and then this part will lock in. Just like that, and you have a mounting plate right here. This is actually the same mounting plate I use when I use a gimbal. Uh, the gimbal I have has an uh, attachment to use the GoPro mount here, so you can put the gimbal out front. But the GoPro also attaches this directly. And I have a lot of skiing videos that I have used uh, with this. A lot of uh, slower paced mountain biking videos also turn out pretty good, but if you have a really rough terrain, it does help to have the gimbal. So that is the second one I like to use a lot. The third piece of gear that I like to use is this little guy. This is probably the lightest weight plastic uh, handle that I have seen for the GoPro. Um, you can hold out here like this. And the nice thing about this is it also is a tripod. So you can drop this anywhere on the ground. Uh, it has enough friction in the arms that you can adjust it for different varying terrain, get different angles out of it. Go for a low terrain like that with one leg pretty high if you need to. So there's a lot of different ways to set this down on the ground, uh, get those passing by shots or just get uh, images while you're climbing and there's nobody else really to film you. So 
excellent little piece of uh, gear for your camera equipment and weighs next to nothing. So that is it. That's all I wanted to share with you. Was this some of the equipment that I brought when I would do uh, video and film uh, for the trip I took to Ice Fest this year? I know this video is a little late coming. I uh, had a lot of other things going on right now. But I appreciate you guys uh, checking back and checking this out. If you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, drop me comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see in the future. Let me know if you have any questions about the topics I covered here today. Uh, if you have any questions at all about some of the other stuff for, for bringing for climbing or for uh, capturing things in the backcountry, uh, I'll be happy to try to answer those the best I can. Thanks again, and I hope you guys continue to adventure widely.